today we are going to be talking about science chapter one lesson four and it's entitled science and engineering our objectives today by the end of the lesson you should be able to explain how science technology engineering and mathematics are closely related identify ways that technology responds to social and political and economic needs explain the engineering design process for developing new technologies and describe how technology has intended benefits and unintended consequences so what is technology most of the time today when we think of technology we think of something relating to computers or iPhones, but technology refers to the products and processes that are designed to serve our needs. It also refers to the tools and the methods for creating the products that are designed to serve our needs. So basically technology applies to any product, process, or knowledge that is developed to meet a need. So for example, when paper was invented, that was technology. When a pencil was invented, technology. So anything that relates to a product or process that helps us is considered to be technology. So why are we talking about technology and science? Because engineering uses scientific knowledge to develop technologies. So engineers use both science and math to create new technologies that serve human needs. There are many, many different kinds and types of engineers that we talked about with our super scientists a couple of weeks ago. They're the ones who develop a variety of very different products. So engineering is the process of creating technology. You're actually taking the knowledge and applying it. So scientists, inventors, business owners, artists, and even you as a student have used the engineered new technologies. Anyone, even you, can follow the engineering design process to help solve a problem or to address a need. So what is the engineering design process? It's very similar to the scientific method, um, but like the scientific method, some steps may require repeating or modifying to fit different needs. So step one, you start with a question. <laughs> Sound familiar? All right, so identifying and researching a need. So engineers define and write the need or the problem that they're trying to solve. For example, the problem may be to make clothing that repels water so that explorers can work, even in Antarctica. Think about why that would be important. They're in a very cold part of the world. So if they get wet, that could lead to hypothermia and even death. So this is something that they would need. So research provide engineers with information for problem solving. And step two, you imagine you're developing possible solutions to that problem. So brainstorming is the process in which a group of people share ideas quickly to promote additional ideas. So sometimes if you kind of get stuck, it's nice to have a group of people there even just one other person that you can bounce ideas off of sometimes it gets you to thinking more so sometimes a possible solution to the problem comes from these ideas or it may take more time and thought step three you actually make the prototype now a prototype is simply the test model it's something that you start out with it's not going to be your end product. Prototypes allow engineers to see if the design works the way that they expect it to or that they think it will. And step four, this is testing and evaluating. So you test to see how the prototype works and evaluate does it work or not. 
Engineers during this step create a cost-benefit analysis. This is to make sure that the cost of designing and producing the new product is worth its benefit. So if you've ever watched the TV show Shark Tank, this is exactly what those people are doing. They're going through the engineering design process and then they're trying to get people to help them financially get their product out into the world so they can make some money. So a cost-benefit analysis is very important to those sharks. They don't want to lose money. All right, so for example, it may only make sense to produce a new product if it is not too expensive to produce. And then step five, you finally, you improve. You modify and you retest the solution. So if the prototype was not successful or it did not work well, Engineers would either modify their prototype or they would try a new solution. It is important that engineers consider what was learned from the first prototype before they begin the design process all over again because they don't want to repeat the same mistakes. So this should look familiar to you. This was one of your EN pages last week and it takes you, takes you through the steps of the engineering design process. And you can see that the arrows go back and forth, meaning you may have to go back and punt, so to speak. So just like in the scientific uh, method, what's the point in doing all this if you don't communicate what you learned? So engineers often need to share their successes, even their failures in their reasoning with others. And engineers may explain and promote the technology to customers or they may communicate with the public through news releases, advertisements, or journals. So, technology provides solutions for many types of social, political, and economic needs. You could even think about the pandemic that we're going through. So, same thing applies there. So, there are always intended benefits and unintended consequences. An intended benefit is the positive purpose for which the technology is designed to be used. It's what in, was intended to happen. The unintended consequence, those are uses or results that engineers do not purposefully include in the design of the products. An unintended consequence, however, can at times be beneficial but it can also at times be detrimental. An example to that would be the car. The car being invented, wonderful thing. That was its intended benefit. It gets us to and from places a whole lot quicker than we could ride a bike or walk or uh, go on a horse-drawn wagon. But uninten unintended consequences of that would be the pollution that we have today due to so many cars being on the road. So everything that's invented, you have your intended benefit and you have unintended consequences that come from that. Bioengineering. The prefix bio means living. So biology is the study of life. So bioengineering is the application of engineering to living things like us, and plants, so humans and plants. They are classified as either assistive or adaptive. If you assist someone, you help them. So assistive technologies are developed to help organisms without changing them. An example of this would be if your vision is poor and you wear contacts or glasses, you take those glasses off, you're not changing anything permanently. Take the contacts out, not changing anything permanently. However, if you have LASIK eye surgery, you are permanently changing your eyes. They'll never be the same again. So LASIK eye surgery would not be an assistive technology. It would be an adaptive technology. So adaptive bioengineered products change the living organism. So assistive help, no permanent change. Adaptive 
there's a permanent change. In our next lesson, we will discuss tools, measurement, and safety.